I mean, at one point in her emails, she's telling Jeffrey's lawyers, don't email me at the office anymore. Here's my Gmail. Email me at my Gmail. What is up guys, welcome back to the Wildcast. Hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the non-prosecution agreement that was signed between the estate attorney's office in Florida and the lawyers of Jeffrey Epstein. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about Assistant State Attorney Marie Villafania, who was one of the key people that negotiated that deal with Jeffrey Epstein's lawyers. Now, this is somebody who was not covered widely by the media. In fact, I don't see, a, I only see, I only found one uh, critical article about her conduct during this investigation. That is the article you're seeing on the screen right now. And this is the only critical article that I was able to find. Um, and I looked hard. I looked on Google. I looked on YouTube. Almost nobody covered this. The only time the media covered uh, Marie Villafania is when it came, came to the fact that she resigned from Acosta's office. And we're going to talk about that after, okay, after we look at the legal papers and I break down the case for you guys. We're going to look at what she's doing now after she left the office, which is also suspicious suspicious um, when she left. But anyways, this was an article written in the Florida Bulldog, a very well, well and thoroughly researched article by Noreen Marcus here. So I want to give her some credit. And uh, I'm going to go, go over some of what she said here. I'm also going to show you guys the direct legal papers as I always do. And we're going to discuss this. So this whole case comes down to Courtney Wilde, who's the person who filed a petition for writ of mandamus to the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida. Courtney Wilde, what she's trying to do here is that she She's trying to say that Acosta's office basically did wrong by her and acted illegally uh, or at least immorally um, when it comes to how, how they treated uh, the victims and denied the victims under the Victims' Rights Act, which is what she's suing under. So she's basically saying that Acosta's office should be held accountable for not letting them know certain information that was relevant to their safety and their well-being and just letting them know that the government had actually reached a deal with Jeffrey Epstein and and his lawyers, but they never did that. So it, we're not going to go into the details of the case. You guys know what the case is about. Um, this happened basically on April 2020, where um, in a three in a two to one decision, uh, Newsom and uh, uh, Yo Flat here ruled against Courtney Wilde and Hull ruled in favor of Courtney Wilde. So we're going to be looking at Hull's dissenting opinion, which is where she goes into the conduct of Marie Villafania. Okay. So if you, if you actually look at this document and you go to page 60, that's when um, her dissenting opinion starts, right? Where she starts to talk about Villafania. But so this is what the lawyers said, the lawyers who actually ruled against uh, Courtney Wilde. This is what they said in their uh, decision, right? Um, I highlighted the key part here, but I want to read you guys the entire thing. Despite our sympathy for Miss Wilde and others like her, who who suffered unspeakable horror at Epstein's hands, only to be left in the dark. And so it seems affirmatively misled by the government lawyers, we find ourselves constrained to deny her petition. We hold that at least as matters currently stand, which is to say at least as the CVRA is currently written, rights under the act do not attach until criminal proceedings have been initiated against a defendant, either by complaint, information, or indictment. Because the government never filed charges or otherwise commenced criminal proceedings against Jeffrey Epstein, the CVRA was never triggered. It's not a result we like, but it's the result we think the law requires. So and then they go on to talk about it. Uh, they say, oh, yes, Jeffrey Epstein's so evil, but we can't do anything. So basically, their argument is um, we can't do anything. These two lawyers, the 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 two who ruled against uh, against uh, um uh, Courtney Wilde, they're saying that we can't do anything because as the CVRA is written, it does not, it did not attach to this case and it can't be used to sue for, for uh, Courtney Wilde. She can't use it to sue the government because, um, because the CVRA didn't attach because the criminal proceedings had not been, uh, had not started against Jeffrey Epstein. So basically they're saying the government never filed criminal charges against them because, you know, they reached that non-prosecution agreement. So they didn't actually officially file charges against him. So 
we can't use it now now that was the decision of newsom and uh your flat here who, however you pronounce this <laughs> but hall on the other hand judge hall who you're seeing right here frank m hall despite her the fact that her name is frank she is a woman um but that's kind of cool uh frank m hall judge frank m m hall ruled against this and so with that being said let us now move on to the article uh, the article actually summarized what happened here very well so i want to read you guys a little bit of this and then we'll slowly move on to Willafania and her role in this whole thing and the, the the wrong things in my opinion that she did so let's go on april 14 the federal appeals court in atlanta ruled that epstein's victims cannot seek justice under the u.s crime victims rights act the cvra because basically acosta decided not to file an indictment against jeffrey epstein so acosta's choice cheated the victims two times first by failing to punish the abuser and then by denying them a legal remedy the court didn't speak unanimously, however. Judge Frank Hall issued an indignant 60-page dissent that includes new details about how the notorious deal came together. It shows that prosecutors worked closely with Epstein's defense team to shut the victims out of the bargaining process that clearly violated the law. Hall wrote in her dissent that begins at page 60. So we're, I showed you guys um, her dissent. It's from the legal papers. If you go to page 60, you can see where she starts. And I'm going to read you guys directly from her uh, dissent here. But let's let's first finish this. The CVRA is not as important as the majority now rewrites it to be, she declared in her dissent. Encouraged by this, the victims' lawyers are asking the full U.S. Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit to review the 2-1 panel decision. Hall's dissent says former assistant U.S. attorney Anne Marie Villafania, who is the subject of this video, the lead Miami prosecutor in dealing with Epstein's defense team, helped keep his victims in the dark. The case had been turned over to the federal government for more than two years, but I hadn't heard anything. I call and speak with Marie Villafania of the U.S. attorney's office, and she confirmed that this is a massive case. I started asking when she thought a trial was actually going to happen. And I remember her telling me that there's a lot that I want to tell you, Brad, that I can't tell you. So let's move on to Villafania now, okay? Quote, Villafania suggested strategies to conceal portions of the plea deal from the court. The dissent says the agreement even states that a quote will not be made part of any public record, end quote. The dissent also shows that Villafania strove to protect the identity of the invisible, quote-unquote, potential co-conspirators, the deal shielded from prosecution. A week before it was signed in September 2007, Villafania sent what appears to be a smoking gun to an Epstein defense lawyer. Quote, I would prefer not to highlight for the trial judge all the crimes and all of the other persons that we that we could charge. End quote. Hall quoted uh, her saying in an email. So this is Willafania talking in an email. And we're going to look at all of this in a second. I'm going to show you guys this so you guys can get double confirmation. This is not just coming from the article, but from uh, the judge herself. And the judge, by the way, has information that we do not have, like private communications that she was able to get. And we're going to talk about all of that. The deal not only provided cover for the unindicted, it suspended a South Florida grand jury proceeding that would have outed them. Quote, all pending federal grand jury subpoenas will be held in abeyance unless and until the defendant violates any terms of this agreement. It says the subpoena list has never been never surfaced publicly. Villafania left the U.S. Attorney's Office in August 2019 and now works for the Department of Health and Human Services in Phoenix, Arizona. She did not respond to emailed questions from Florida Bulldog. The Justice Department's Office of Professional Responsibility is investigating Acosta. And by the way, that investigation has, pro uh, has finished and uh, they found nothing wrong, at least at a managerial level. Villafania and others who worked on the deal, uh, the 2007 deal, by leaving the U.S. Attorney's Office. When she did, Willafania avoided the possibility of getting fired, which she most likely would have been if this information came out. Hull, a Clinton appointee to the 11th Circuit, dissented in the case of In re Courtney Wilde. She was outvoted by Judge Kevin Newsom, a Trump appointee and author of the majority opinion, and Judge Gerald Bard uh, Yoflat, a Gerald Ford appointee who holds the record for tenure on a federal appeals court. 
So in the next section, they, they go on to talk about Newsom's opinion. Uh, Newsom is the judge who wrote the majority opinion against Courtney Wilde. Newsom, a Trump appointee, ruled against the victim of Jeffrey Epstein. So for all the Q people out there, your guy failed you. Wilde has no rights under the victim's uh, protection law because Acosta didn't initiate formal criminal proceedings against Epstein. Newsom reasoned. Acosta's office prepared but never filed a 53-page indictment. Okay, so and this is what they say. The judges, the Trump judges says the CVRA was never triggered. The judge wrote, it's not the result we like, but it's the result we think the law requires. He suggested that Congress revise the law to cover situations like this. So golly gee willikers, we can't do anything. That was what the Trump judge said. Then the then Hull, Frank Hull fired back. She was the only one who ruled correctly, in my opinion, uh, who ruled in favor of Courtney Wilde. Hull fired back saying she sees no such limitations in the law. Quote, the majority's new blanket restriction eviscerates crime victims' CVRA rights and makes the Epstein case a poster child for an entirely different justice system for the crime victims of wealthy defendants. And she goes, goes on to talk about uh, how Jeffrey Epstein was a well-connected person and um, she disagrees with the ruling of the majority. So I want to read you guys directly from the legal documents. So this is the legal document. It's a cover page. Let's move on to to, um, the part where they talk about Willifania and this non-prosecution agreement. So this is from Hall's dissent. Now, Hall's dissent starts on page 60. This is page 70. So I'm reading you guys the most relevant parts of this, okay? I don't want to read everything, just, just the key parts to get you get the point across here. Non-prosecution agreement. What happened next remains baffling, to put it mildly. During September 2007, Epstein's defense attorney engaged in more intensive pre-indictment plea negotiations with the U.S. Attorney's Office. Um, August 2006 letter to crime victims about CVRA rights. Throughout the two-year investigation, once a victim of Epstein's sexual abuse was identified, the lead assistant U.S. attorney, that would be Villafania, assigned to the case, uh, Marie Villafania, sent a letter telling the victim that she was protected by the CVRA and explaining her statutory rights under the CVRA. The office would agree not to federally prosecute Epstein and his co-conspirators, in return for which Epstein would plead guilty to a mere two-state prostitution solicitation charges and agree to an 18-month sentence in the county jail. I believe he only ended up serving 15 months, if I'm not mistaken, but it was much less than he deserved. And this is like a slap on the wrist, less than a slap on the wrist, okay? On September 16, 2007, Epstein's counsel, Jay Lefkowitz, sent the U.S. Attorney's Office a proposed written agreement wherein the office would extend immunity from federal prosecution to Epstein and, co -cons and certain co-conspirators. The next day, Epstein's counsel, Lefkowitz, followed up, asking if the office, quote, intended to make the deferred prosecution agreement public. Should Epstein agree to, quote, go the route? Assistant U.S. Attorney Villafania responded, quote, a non-prosecution agreement would not be made public or filed with the court, but it would remain part of our case file. It probably would be subject to a FOIA request, but it is not something that we would distribute without compulsory process. Okay, so basically she's promising Lefkowitz that this document will be kept in secret. The way that she talks to her, and I've seen some of her personal emails, which we're going to get to, she's very, very comfortable, a little bit too comfortable with Lefkowitz here. Okay, and that's my problem. And that's what the judge points out. That's more than that. The judge points out the fact that she's literally promising them that this will not be made public. So basically saying that, hey, this deal will not be released to the to the broad population. And by the way, they didn't even let, let the victims know. So that's even a bigger deal. But nevertheless, she's basically promising Lefkowitz, who is Epstein's lawyer, that this non-prosecution agreement will not be made public because they know how bad it looks. Okay. They know how good of a deal they got here uh, from Acosta's office and also from uh, Villafania here. So that's why they're worried about it getting into the public. And she's reassuring them, Epstein's lawyers, that the agreement will not be leaked publicly unless somebody files a FOIA request or, you know, forces a compulsory process. So that's very, very suspicious. It's very suspicious how nice and accommodating Villafania is being to Jeffrey Epstein's lawyer here, okay? So let's keep on going here. The victims were not told that the plea negotiations were ongoing, much less the office was seriously considering a non-prosecution agreement granting federal immunity to Epstein and his co-conspirators.
Rather, the parties made great efforts to keep that secret from the victims and the public too. One more thing I want to re uh, highlight again in the in the top of the video, I played you guys uh, a small segment from Filthy Rich, which talked about how uh, the assistant U.S. attorney gave her personal email address to Jeffrey Epstein's lawyers, and she did actually do that. And I mean, at one point in her emails, she's telling Jeffrey's lawyers, "Don't email me at the office anymore. Here's my Gmail. Email me at my Gmail." So here's one of the emails that were released to the public by the court of Marie Villafania talking to Jay Lefkowitz, and she's using her personal Gmail account. Now, as somebody who's worked in government, both local and state government, you have to use your government email to do government business. But this is a this is not her personal case. She has no personal, as far as we know, she had no personal stake in this, but she's using her personal Gmail account to do business with Jeffrey Epstein's lawyers. Now, why would you do that? Well, one of the reasons that you would do this is so that the government doesn't immediately get uh get records of what you talked about, right? Because the government emails can be looked at by your superiors if there's, you know, some kind of concern, but your personal emails are less likely to get searched. Mr. Acosta holds some meetings outside the U.S. attorney's office, outside lawyers' offices, in a room at the Marriott Hotel that were clearly intended to preserve the secrecy of the negotiations that were going on. I'm not saying that that's the reason that she did this, but it's very suspicious that she decided to use her personal email to talk uh, to talk to Lefkowitz instead of just using the government uh, government emails like everybody else does. So very, very suspicious. But anyways, that's one point that I want to make. So let's go into one of the emails that the judge pointed out here in an email to Lefkowitz dated September 16th. That's the email I just showed you guys right here. September 16th, Assistant U.S. Attorney Villafania suggested strategies to conceal portions of the plea deal from the courts, stating that a prosecutor had, quote, recommended that some of the timing issues be addressed only in the state agreement so that it isn't obvious to the judge that we are trying to create federal jurisdiction for prison purposes. Assistant U.S. Attorney Villafania added, quote, I will include our standard language regarding resolving all criminal liability and I will mention co-conspirators, but I would prefer not to highlight for the judge all of the other crimes and all of the other persons that we could charge. So basically, she's trying to she's trying to reduce the uh, attention that's paid to the co-conspirator and she's trying to get attention away from the trial judge uh, of other crimes that were committed by Jeffrey Epstein that were not directly enumerated uh, in the initial charges. So she's trying to take attention away from significant portions of Jeffrey Epstein's crimes and Try to take trying to take attention from the co-conspirators so that the case doesn't look as damning as it actually should be. So as we read here, she's trying to make the case seem as weak as possible when it goes to the trial judge so that so that they go easy, they go as easy as possible on Jeffrey Epstein. So this is stuff that she did while this deal was being negotiated to make things easier for Jeffrey Epstein, okay? So th that's why this is important. And then to make things worse, she actually came out in public and said that she advocated and did everything possible to make sure that the victims were treated fairly. She has this. Th the reason I want to cover this woman is specifically because she tried to defend herself after doing all this and tried to, you know, pretend like she was a slay queen standing up for, uh, for girl power. She was not a slay queen. She was not for girl, girl power. She was actually advocating for Jeffrey Epstein and his co-conspirators. She was not somebody he was advocating for um, Courtney Wilde and all the other victims from Florida. OK, that's what I want to highlight here. So last page in later correspondence with Epstein's attorneys, uh, assistant U.S. attorney Villafania admitted that Epstein did not want the U.S. attorney's office to inform the state attorney's office of the facts supporting the additional state prostitution solic solicitation charge, nor did Epstein want federal victims to contact the state court or prosecutor because the state's prosecutors, quote, a opinion may change if she knew the full scope of Epstein's actions. To this day, the U.S. Attorney's Office has presented no evidence that it or anyone else told the state court, either before or during Epstein's state hearing, about the secret consideration Epstein had negotiated with the federal government, federal immunity for him and all his co-conspirators, if the state court accepted his state plea. 
Furthermore, consisting with Epstein's demand, the U.S. Attorney's Office did not notify the victims about the NPA. But before acquiescing, the manner in which the office responded to Epstein's demands unmasked the truth. Okay, so you guys get the point I'm trying to make here. This woman had the opportunity to go much harder on Jeffrey Epstein than she did, but she chose not to do it. And it's amazing that literally nobody in the mainstream media or in the alternative media have made videos about this. Now, I'm not really blaming them because, you know, somebody has to cover it somewhere to get attention. And basically nobody covered this. This journalist, Noreen Marcus here, should get a lot of credit and also Judge Hall for actually calling out a U.S. attorney or a uh, assistant U.S. attorney who was Villafania. This is important because Villafania had the opportunity to make Jeffrey Epstein and his co-conspirators pay, okay, dearly, and she chose not to do it. And worse yet, she came out in public and pretended like she was an advocate for Courtney Wilde. She was not. She was actively, as I just read to you guys, she was actively trying to hide and go as easy as possible, trying to hide evidence so that the state judges would not know about the federal immunity agreement and does not know the full extent of Jeffrey Epstein's crimes so that they would not, they would go as easy as possible on him. And worse yet, she was having like buddy buddy conversations with Jeffrey Epstein's lawyer so last thing check it out hi Jay this can wait until after the show but my voice is going so I thought I would type it up so what the F show are you talking about and why the hell do you have personal uh, schedule information of Jay Lefkowitz it's like it's like she's buddy buddy with Jay Lefkowitz and they're like having pancakes together or something this is insane guys this is a government employee a state attorney for working for the state attorney's office a state uh, assistant state attorney that's what she was and she was ta she's talking to this guy using her personal email and talking about how she, uh, you know her voice is going so let's talk after the show this like this drove me insane when i read this and this was much worse than i thought at first how how compromised she was now i don't know why she did this i have no idea okay i don't know why anybody would do this like i don't know what her motives are i'm not gonna try to speculate i'm sure some of you will and um but i'm not gonna do it okay i'm not gonna speculate i have no idea why she would be this easy on Jeffrey Epstein I have no clue okay but it's very suspicious at the at the least okay and I want to point out and criticize her for the uh ridiculous behavior that she exhibited here I'm, I'm sure she's not going to sh see this video but if somebody can send send this video to her I, I would appreciate it and she deserves to be criticized for what she did here okay and I'm glad that at least the judge and this particular journalist called her out on this BS because this is outrageous behavior by a government official who's supposed to be looking out for the people, for the victims, and not for the rich douchebag who's getting away with this. Okay? So there you go. That's all I had to say. I had to cover this person because it's it's disgraceful how she handled herself. And I find it very interesting that she left um, the attorney's office altogether in August 2019. And now she's working for um, the Department of Health and Human Services in Arizona. So she left the state. <laughs> she left she left Florida and moved far, far away to Arizona and um, because she knew that she would be held accountable in some way if this information came out, came out. Unfortunately, the judge really can't do anything. Despite the fact that the worst that she would have faced, even if she stayed on, is, is getting fired, as they mentioned here, um, I would like her to be banned from working for the government. That's one thing I would like because she is not fit to uh, to adjudicate anything to, or, or to work for the public good here because she had an opportunity here to work for the public good and she decided to work for Jeffrey Epstein instead, trying to get in the best deal possible okay so i find it disgraceful how she acted and i'll I, and if nobody's gonna call around on it i'm gonna do it and that's the reason I want to make this video. And once again, before I leave, I want to give some credit to Judge Frank Hall, who actually did the right thing and sided with the victims in this case, um, Courtney Wilde and the rest of the girls in Florida. So with that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. As always, if you want to support the channel, you can go to patreon.com. And also, if you want to support the show, you can also join channel memberships down below by clicking the blue join button. With that being said, make sure you like the video and you're subscribed and you hit the bell so you get notifications of my future videos. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time. As always, peace. Skål! Skål. Skål.